Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Sportsy, and this is going to be a video discussing the Hitscan Hyperlight, the mouse of the year, I guess. I mean, it's taken the scene by storm, and it is another 40 gram Ambi mouse, but there is a bit of drama. This is apparently the design that the ATK F1 um, was based off of. An earlier version of this design, ATK stole. Shocking, a Chinese OEM stealing a design. We've never seen this before in the uh, mouse industry. But the situation is actually interesting for a few reasons. First and foremost, these shapes are different. I do prefer the Hyperlite for fingertip. It has flatter sides, it has a higher sensor position, and there are just a few differences. But what also happened recently is the ATK F1 Extreme release. And this kind of just mogs it, I'm not gonna lie. The Hyperlite before shipping and tax is $90 with a 1K dongle. Um, the ATK F1 Extreme with an 8K dongle included and coming in at 35 grams was $90 all in. And when you factor in that Hitscan's 8K dongle costs $25, which I feel like is an extremely steep ask, I feel like 15 would be more reasonable, but what do I know? Um, yeah, there's just a better value between these two mice. I know the scene, the mouse scene today, it is dictated by price first and foremost, followed by weight, um, probably followed by click latency, honestly, and then we get to shape, and then all the way at the end, we have build quality. But these mice coming out of the same factory, do I feel like there's a significant difference in the level of quality? Um, honest to God, no. I can only speak to the quality of my units, but my Hitscan Hyperlite does have very minor, like, just side popping. That was the water bottle. Um, but yeah, this seems to happen on every mouse that comes out of this factory. My F1 Extreme, I have only had it for a few days, which is when issues with ATK mice tend to start popping up, but the sidewalls on this at the 35 gram solid shell is fucking pretty, pretty solid. Like there's nothing to really complain about flexing wise, aside from bottom flexing, which is, I mean, it's incredibly flexy. And you actually notice the point where I have this flexing is right where they stop using the PCB as sidewall support. So the areas where you are applying your fingers, actually gripping the mouse, they are using P the PCB to um, make the sidewall stronger. So you won't experience any flexing. And really for the 40 gram weight, this does come in on my scale at 42 with the full size skates, but it's really like a low 40 gram mouse. But the F1 Extreme at 35 you can notice a difference in density of course with these shapes being so similar but now i will talk about the differences because there are differences they don't feel anywhere near one-to-one -one in hand well they do um, especially for me when i claw grip these both just feel way too small and they just kind of morph into the same like thin just shape that doesn't have enough body for me um, but the real difference is the Hyperlite has flatter sides. It does not flare out as much towards the bottom. Um, a mouse that a lot of people were comparing it to is the Viper Mini. And yeah, it's really not a Viper Mini. I never loved the Viper Mini Signature Edition. I would recommend either the F1 Extreme or the Hyperlite over it, um, considering value for money, of course. But yeah, the Viper Mini, it does feel a little bit smaller than these in hand. And there is a much more significant like thumb curve than there is on the Hitscan Hyperlite. And I really do enjoy the Hyperlite for fingertip. I'm not trying to make it seem like this mouse isn't worth buying. And yeah, just shape-wise, you can see it next to the ULX Small and the Arbiter Akitsu. It definitely is a step up in size from those, but I would really not call this a medium mouse. Um, but it's definitely more clawable, and the price is cheaper. Um, so it does look like a better value compared to those. But just being honest with something so similar um, with the F1 Extreme, I don't feel like people are going to play significantly different in game like you might have a slight shape preference but it's so minimal that i don't think it's anything that you couldn't just wind up adjusting to there are other mice in this weight range that are like very different styles of shapes uh, much more claw grip and like back hump focused with mice like the Sora V2, the Skyrox V8, and of course the VXE Mad R, which is a cheaper mouse, again, stemming from the same factory. And VXE is the budget brand of ATK, and I just really have not enjoyed this mouse. For one, the shape is just fucking dull. Like, I really just don't enjoy it for fingertip for claw it's fine it's just kind of like an in-between size of the pulsar x2 but it just feels somehow worse i really just did not enjoy the shape i put some time on it and it's a great budget mouse um, but it's just a very mediocre shape i imagine this is how people like feel about the gpx shape but i was just born with the gene that loves the gpx shape but yeah considering you can get the 3395 mad r for like 50 dollars it is a really good budget pick 
and something worth considering, but I just, I can't really get behind the shape because I can't fingertip it because the hump is like too long and prominent compared to the X2 Mini. My base was uneven on this. It really just gave me trouble. I should have put full-size skates on, but I don't know. I just really don't care about this mouse. And it is the successor to the R1 Pro and the click quality didn't go to shit on me like it did on that mouse. The Omron optical implementation between this, the ATK F1 Extreme, and the Hitscan Hyperlite, they are all very similar. If I had, like, I probably could pick out the Hyperlite in a blind test because these are really tactile, really loud. Um, Quality-wise, there's not much to complain about. There is a good amount of side-to-side -side wobble after I press it in compared to the F1 Extreme. Maybe they put like some glue on these switches and maybe it'll get worse over time, but that is something um, slight that I notice post-travel is going to be there. But yeah, these implementations, they just feel like disgustingly similar in my opinion. And yeah, hopefully the clicks really don't loosen up too much over time because that is something I've noticed on a lot of these more budget, um, super lightweight mice is just the click quality doesn't feel good. As I noticed it with the Skyrox V8 on the first batch. This is like almost unplayably bad. Uh, the Ninjutsu Sora V2, the post-travel mushiness, it was really awful. So you just can't really expect perfection and there's nothing about the Hyperlite that is drastically different from these other lightweight mice on the market. And that's just really how I felt about it. Um, it's just another, it's another fish in the pond and it's a great pond. It's a pond of really good, um, relatively affordable mice but I just don't feel like it's going to take the world by storm um, like some of these other earlier reviews. And again, no no hate to Hitscan. They made a fucking really good mouse, but when the F1 Extreme is just literally almost the same thing, like feature for feature, and it is more updated, it like does outclass it on a few features, you just gotta... I mean, that's the reality of the situation. But yeah, it's not like I'm only going to give one an endorsement and say to completely disregard the other. Um, it'll just come down to your preferences, mostly on sensor position and just like slight differences in the shape because the coding, the clicks, everything, even the side button design, maybe it's a little bit thicker on the Hyperlite, but the positioning, the spacing between them, very similar, just the feeling of the buttons themselves. I don't love them. Like it's better than a GPX click feeling wise. I figure I can just simply do a sound test in both of these mice and you can see that it's going to sound very similar. This is the F1 Extreme. Is there like a fucking ping in there? I don't know. And yeah, this is the Hyperlite. Yeah, getting back to the side buttons, the Hyperlite, I would say they have a pretty crisp feeling to them. I wouldn't call it stiff. And the design on the F1, it just, it seems always prone to loosening and uh, just unevenness throughout the button. So these being a bit thicker, a kind of different design, I do prefer that. Um, that's another thing as well. But this mouse, like I mentioned before, just a bit too small for me to comfortably claw in Fortnite compared to something like the Zowie S2. What a mouse, what a fucking mouse. So there's really not a ton to say. If you've ever had a mouse like the ATK F1 or the VXE Mad R, like you know what the shell is going to feel like on the Hitscan Hyperlite, but the shape itself is going to be slightly different. I did not have any issue with the 3395 like complex firmware implementation. Um, you really do lose out on only a few like negligible features compared to a 3950 and the integrity of the implementation. I never felt like it was questionable. Yeah, I know there are some people who if they're paying a higher dollar number, they want to see the higher sensor number, but I can't report any type of actual issue with the sensor implementation. And I truly do think your thumbs position in relation to the sensor positioning is going to have more of an impact on how the actual like mouse movement feels than any tech differences between these mice. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be all for this video. I kind of just wanted to do a discussion on the Hitscan Hyperlay comparison to the F1 Extreme and just kind of give my thoughts that this is going to wind up as another um, solid small mouse. But yeah, my time using the Hyperlite, while it's undeniably like a good package, you get high quality stock skates, weight balancing is good, quality is good all around, high sensor position. I just don't feel like it really reinvents the wheel. It's just another good small mouse option. And I know some people are mad about the shape being cloned, the morality and the ethics. But when I reviewed the Skyrox V8, literally nobody cared that this was a clone of the Pulsar X2. 
um, H mini. So is it only a thing with like a small company getting their shape stolen? It's like worse. Um, and again, it's like not even the same design. Um, it's the ATK F1 is a previous version of the shape. And yeah, it's going to be about all for this video. Like I mentioned, I'm not going to give a glowing recommendation one way or the other. These super lightweight mice, um, it's becoming a very saturated category where you can just choose the shape you prefer and pretty much get a 40 gram solid shell mouse. Um, so there's always that, which is lovely. I know some people don't like buying from ATK um, because they have like laughably bad after sales service. Like they'll offer you $5 if your mouse has unplayable creaking issues. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of how it is. This AliExpress budget mouse scene, it's the fucking wild west. Um, and buying from these small companies at more premium prices, you do hope that there is a better warranty system, but yeah, I, I can't really guarantee you I didn't see anything about a warranty. I checked the warranty section of their website, probably where I should have started. It's just a pretty um, cookie cutter one year warranty, so nothing crazy in that department either. So yeah, that's gonna be all for this video. If you have the Hitscan Hyperlite, let me know what you think about it, or the ATK F1 Extreme, or just any mouse, any mouse, let me know what you think about it. Happy Halloween, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Um, the mouse scene, real spooky. Peace out.